Bottled water is often loaded with microplastics and depending on what study you look at, the numbers can be shockingly high. So let's go over the available data that we have on plastic water bottles and talk about how much of that you will absorb and what to do about. It. Okay, so as you know, microplastics are tiny fragments of plastic, usually smaller than five millimeters, but the ones in bottled water can go way smaller down to nanoplastics, which are less than a micrometer in size. That's a thousandth of a millimeter. You can't really see them, you can't taste them, but they are definitely there and you're drinking them. In 2018, a study tested 11 popular bottled water brands and on average, they found around 325 plastic particles per liter. Some brands were much worse, going up to over 900 particles per liter. And that was just using standard lab methods. Newer technology is way more precise. For example, in 2024, researchers used laser-based imaging to look into even smaller particles. And the results? Around 240,000 plastic fragments per liter. Yeah, that many plastic pieces in one single bottle. Most of them were nanoplastics, so small that previous studies couldn't even detect them. This raises an obvious question. Where are all these microplastic particles coming from? And there are a few main sources here. First, the bottle itself. Most bottled water comes in PET plastic containers and just the act of opening or closing the cap can cause tiny fragments to break off into the water. Next, the bottling process. High-speed machines, plastic tubing, friction, these all contribute to plastic particles getting into the final product. And then lastly, of course, environmental contamination. Even the air in the bottling facility can contain airborne plastic particles that will settle into the water. Okay, I know this is all very concerning. So let's talk about how much plastic you're actually consuming. One study estimated that people who only drink bottled water could be ingesting around 90,000 microplastic particles per year just from the water alone. If you drink mostly tap water, that number will drop to around 4,000. That's a huge difference, over 30 times more plastic just by switching to bottled water instead of tap water. The same study estimated that if you combine all microplastic particles from your water, food, and the air that you breathe, the average person ingests anywhere from 74,000 to 121,000 microplastic particles per year, with bottled water drinkers obviously being on the very high end of that range. So what happens to these small particles once they're inside your body? This is where things get interesting. While larger microplastics can pass through your digestive system, the very small nanoplastics are so tiny that they can slip through the intestinal wall and enter your bloodstream. From there, they can travel to organs, tissues, and even the brain. Some studies have shown that microplastics can even accumulate in the liver, kidney, heart, and testicles. And they have also been found in the placenta and breast milk. Animal studies are starting to give us some clue about the potential impact of all of this. Mice exposed to levels of microplastics that were similar to what we as humans ingest have shown increased inflammation, disrupted gut microbiomes, and signs of oxidative stress. And while we can't directly apply these results to humans, they definitely suggest that microplastics are a major modern problem. We also know that they can physically block enzymes in your body. Again, especially the really small ones, so the nanoparticles. These are so tiny that they can actually interact with biological molecules in ways that we usually only expect from toxins or heavy metals. When they get close to enzymes, they can interfere with how these enzymes function. In some cases, the plastic fragments physically bind to the active site of an enzyme and then it blocks it from doing its job. That's a big deal because enzymes run nearly every process in your body. So digestion, energy production, detoxification, you name it. If these enzymes are even slightly impaired, then your metabolism will slow down, nutrients aren't broken down properly, and oxidative stress builds up faster. Okay, with all this doom and gloom, what can you do about it? I talk about the best way to detoxify microplastics in different videos. The cliff notes are basically that microplastic detox happens in three steps. First, you reduce the exposure, then you reduce the damage that they cause, and then you do targeted elimination from your cells and body. Cutting down on bottled water is definitely a great first step because it lowers how much plastic you're taking in. 
So if you can, try to use glass bottles instead of plastic ones. Of course, you can also start filtering your water, but the capacity to filter microplastics will be different from filter to filter. Also, try to not heat liquids in plastic containers. Everyone knows this, but we still sometimes do it. Heat speeds up the breakdown of plastic and increases the chances of leaching micro and nanoparticles into whatever you're drinking or eating. But please also realize that this alone usually isn't enough. Microplastics are everywhere. Again, your clothes, food packaging, dust. So you also need to reduce the damage that they do and help your body get rid of them. So improving your detox capabilities is always also crucial. Again, my favorite microplastics protocol will be linked in the description, along with my detox masterclass that goes over specific supplement dosages and also additional support on how to use sauna, for example, for better plastic elimination. There are quite a few mistakes that I see beginners make all the time, and that can set you back years. So do some research before going into this, and then follow a structured protocol. Microplastics are definitely the heavy metals of the 21st century, and working on your elimination of them will pay off big time in the future. 